Boy, I haven't done a rant in a long time, have I? Well, okay, long time's an exaggeration, but you get what I mean. Yeah, today I'm going to review the newest Spongebob movie, Saving Bikini Bottom, the Sandy Cheeks movie. So the plot of this movie is that Bikini Bottom gets scooped out of the ocean by an excavator, and Sandy notices that the little plaque on the machine says boots which is a lab that she used to work at and which is conveniently located in texas so Spon so spongebob joined sandy on a quest to save bikini bottom and put it back in the ocean and there's this scientist played by wanda sykes who wants to who wants to genetically clone the all the fish in bikini bottom to sell them as amphibious pets because when she was a kid she really hated that she couldn't have fish as cuddly pets so it's up to spongebob and sandy to go on a huge journey r find her family we'll get to that later and and save bikini bottom yeah this really pains me to say as a spongebob fan but this movie was pretty bad it's not awful i mean it it could have been worse but I mean, I wasn't expecting this movie to be amazing or anything. In fact, I wasn't even expecting it to be as good as the other three Spongebob movies. But this movie was... It could have been so much more, and it felt very lacking. Now, I don't hate the idea of a Sandy movie. You know, of all Spongebob characters to make a movie out of that isn't Spongebob, I think Sandy does kind of make the most sense. I know that kind of sounds like a weird argument that I'm blindly supporting, but really think about it. Sandy's character is that she's a squirrel who went down into the ocean and she's not from there. So it would be interesting to see where she came from and the whole fact that her character is that she's a karate fighting thrill seeker so i think she has the right personality for an adventure movie and even her, it could dive deep into her backstory the problem is it doesn't focus on that too much lots of the lots of the times when it focuses on sandy's origin and her family it more feels so as just a plot device or filler it just feels like a way to get the movie going and there's barely enough time to really devote to that the whole thing about Sandy's origin is that you do see her family. Like, she she has a mom, a dad, a brother, and a few, you know, other siblings. But they don't really focus in, on it that much. The whole story is that Sandy's, um, Sandy came from a family of circus-performing squirrels, which, that's a fun idea. I can definitely see some fun scenarios that come out of there. Oh, and I guess I should mention... Craig Robinson plays Sandy's father, and Johnny Knoxville plays um the plays uh hit her brother Randy, and like they're okay when they're there, but they're more so used as an obstacle. Like they're barely in the movie. Like they do kind of appear in the third act, but I feel having Sandy's family could have added a lot more conflict to the movie because. The whole thing is that she's supposed to be from a family of circus performers, and Sandy's whole thing is that she's a scientist and she wants to revolutionize the world. Now, I get it. That I guess on the surface you could say that would sound like a cliche story about families not wanting wanting a family member to follow a tradition and not wanting them to pursue their own dreams until in the end they learn to accept it. I get it. It's not a really original an original story, but Given this movie's about Sandy, having her family be a big part of the conflict and storyline could have helped. But, I mean, I guess, in all fairness, you could say it would add too much subplots. But I think still think they could have helped a lot. In fact, they actually do kind of use that in the climax, where Sandy's family does appear at the lab called Boots. Yeah, the lab is called Boots. Nah, it's not the weirdest thing in this movie. And and they eventually use use their whole acrobatic circus performing techniques to escape the lab. They and they use Sandy smarts to really really add a lot to it. So 
the whole compromising aspect re really does work. I think it works in this scenario, and I think Sandy's family could have been some interesting characters, but they're really sidelined for most of the movie, and they don't really appear until the third act, so they feel wasted. Like, it feels like... It just feels like a subplot that's just thrown out the window, and most of it's just used for some pretty unfunny and strange gags. Like, okay, I'm not... I think I've probably made this clear. I hate when people say comedy movies focus more on pl uh, jokes than plot, which is not true. I really hate that argument, but... Yeah, I feel this movie, I know it's a Spongebob movie, of course it's going to be goofy, but I feel a lot of the humor in this movie was more odd and random than it was funny. Because I think a lot of the charm of Spongebob's humor was how it related to the plot and you got some funny dialogue and what and things kind of started incredibly slow until something incredibly random happens. That's what makes SpongeBob's humor work. This felt like it tried to be way at too cartoony as possible. In fact, this movie, ironically, is more cartoony than the actual SpongeBob cartoon. Yeah, like you get a lot of a lot of visual gags, lots of fast-paced humor, and lots of really strange, surreal jokes and. I mean, some of them can work. Like, there's this part where, like, early on when Sandy and Spongebob start their adventure and they go into the desert and Spongebob starts drying up. And then and then Sandy says, well, there's water in the desert if you know where to look. And you would think that this is a reference to, like, you know, survival techniques people have in deserted areas. But no, she literally just taps a cactus and a water fountain comes up. Like, that's a good joke. I think... I think when it comes to that kind of surreal humor, that kind of adds a bit to the to the writing. I, I think it really it can be executed well, but lots of the humor just comes off as random, weird, and like lots of the time SpongeBob just makes a bunch of weird faces, and he's basically just a fast-talking shapeshifter. You know, he's basically like an unfunny version of the genie in, in Aladdin. And SpongeBob as a comic relief, I feel doesn't really work when he's not the focus because spongebob's a great character i think when the when the story focuses on him in certain episodes i think he does get a lot of good material but i feel in this movie he felt pointless i mean i get it it's a movie about sandy and spongebob is the main character but why have spongebob really joined the mission at all i mean i know it patrick joined spongebob's adventure in the first movie but Patrick is Spongebob's best friend, so of course he's going to be there with him no matter what. But this way, I feel Spongebob was just there as the comic relief. He just makes a bunch of dumb jokes, and he's basically the polar opposite of Sandy, which I kind of get what they were going at, but he wasn't really... he. They didn't really give him any funny things to say. He didn't really have an interesting arc. He, You could have even cut him out of the movie. He kind of felt pointless. And... Lots of the humor, like I said, with him was came off as really bad. There's even this one joke. There's a streaming joke. There's a streaming joke. It's like he said, he says, "All of Bikini Bottom's gone, and all my streaming videos on demand. I can't demand it anymore." Okay, nobody uses the term streaming on demand, and. Oh my god, like, that line just felt forced. Like, it didn't lead to anything. It just felt like random, like, saying, Ah, you get it, because this is a streaming movie. It felt way too on the nose. Oh, and I think I probably... Have I mentioned the villain? Yeah, like I said, the villain is named Tsunami. <laughs> get it? Tsunami? <laughs> and, look, Wanda Sykes tried her best. I think with... Even though she was a pretty weak character, her performance was okay. She kind of looked like she was having fun, and she has these kind of two dim-witted assistants. And I think with what they're given, they're not terrible. Like, I think the two assistants, I kind of like how they're kind of portrayed as dumb and feel like they don't... They kind of look like they don't want to be in the movie. And that's kind of the thing of their character, how they think Sue is crazy and they don't want to work with her. So I think their performances were fine. But 
like I said, the humor and the writing comes off more as cringeworthy and random and odd. And the whole thing of Sue's backstory, like I said, it's because she wants to genetically alter fish and sell them as pets and because she was sad that as a kid whenever she took a creature out of the ocean it died that's literally her motivation that's it like i don't know why like i don't know she couldn't just get a puppy or something i don't know why she liked sea animals so much but and oh my god this scene there's literally a flashback scene showing a uh, tsunami's backstory and it it's so bad it's like you know how on episode you know how on george lopez whenever they show a flashback it just shows the actor's heads enlarged on a child's body they do that here they literally just take wanda sykes's head and just plaster it on a kid and it's so badly edited and it's so choppy moving and like she takes like a she steals a sea anemone out of an aquarium and then when she and then it shows her in like a bad badly edited background she like holds the sea an anemone and cuddles with it and then it just shatters like it dries up and just shares it's like a really bad late 2000s youtube effect like it looks so bad and you're like Okay, I mean, I'm not going to act... I know it's a Spongebob movie. The villains are going to be over the top, but... And I can't act like they don't have... the All the spun, villains in the other Spongebob movies had great motivations. But it baits that Plankton finally got the... In the first movie, Plankton finally got the Krabby Patty secret formula. And he doesn't just stop there. He literally uses it to have power. And he dives into madness. Like, that's a good villain. And even in the second movie, where... Burger Beard obtains the magic book and thinks that he can obtain power with it. Like, okay, you could say power-hungry villains in SpongeBob movies are a little uh, overused at this point, but it makes sense. And, okay, King Poseidon in the third movie, yeah, he's probably the weakest one because all he cared about is skin care, and there was kind of a bit of a forced message about looks aren't everything, and it kind of feels like that was just a weird message that didn't really seem like that was the point but in this way all she just wants to do is just genetically clone and alter fish and that just so she can cuddle with them and that's it like she has no like they try to make her i guess a bit sympathetic saying that she really likes fish but she came across more as weird and has a, had a really confusing backstory and it just leads to some really weird moments and there's even i guess apparently i didn't know this but apparently this scene was the storyboards for this scene was leaked like a year ago where there's a scene where spongebob like is in a cloning machine and a bunch of little spongebobs uh pop out of him and then like and then his fingers start turning into mini spongebobs and it's like buck teeth turn into spongebob then he loses his mouth and then he's like and then his pupils literally turn into small spongebobs and he just says i don't even know who i am anymore and he just blows up into a million spongebobs and they have to get him all back and i was like okay is this trying to show us that sue's really evil because of how horrific his you know cloning looks even though they try to make her sympathetic. Like, it's weird. Like, I, unlike a lot of people, I have no problem with the sympathetic villain trope because I think part of the thing that makes villains, uh, you know, seem sinister is the fact that they don't know what they're doing is wrong. But they try to make Sue sympathetic, saying that all she wanted to do was cuddle with fish, but then you see SpongeBob go through a weird torture device and it's odd like you know what this movie feels like remember those really bad live action adaptations of cartoons that came out in the 2000s like like you know like well i guess it came out later but like smurfs or rocky and bullwinkle or you know some of the other stuff this feels like one of those but 
I mean, I guess I'll give them props for trying something new and and I mean, like, because, I don't know, a Sandy movie could have had potential if they actually focused a lot more on her background, because there's some interesting moments with it, but they more so just brush it off as filler, and most of it you just get a weird plot that really feels more random than it does funny, and it's, and the pacing is okay, I mean, it's pretty short, it's only, the movie's only like 80 minutes, but to be honest, I was kind of more bored with this movie than the other because the other three spongebob movies are fun this movie i thought was just weird and i was kind of just waiting for it to end like i was like semi bored through a lot of this movie and the one thing spongebob should never make me do is feel bored so yeah this was a disappointing film i mean if you like it that's totally fine i mean maybe there's something in it that i just didn't get because I found this movie really lacking and half-baked. I didn't really know what kind of humor they were trying to get with this. So maybe like a lot of SpongeBob stuff, it has an audience. Maybe there's, like I said, maybe I just don't understand this film. Maybe it's actually good, but to me, it was disappointing. I mean, if you, I mean, I guess kids might find it funny and it's harmless enough but if you're an adult and you're a spongebob fan and eh, this maybe not be that great for you if you don't like really bizarre plots and an unfocused storylines and pretty cringy humor it's just not a good film and I wish it could have been better. I mean, I wasn't expecting this to be great, but it's SpongeBob. I thought it was going to be at least a bit funny, but I don't think I laughed once during this movie. The biggest sin SpongeBob can do is not make me laugh. So, yeah, I really hate to say this, but this movie wasn't very good. It's, I mean, I don't know. Maybe I'm in the minority. I don't know what the reception for this movie is. Maybe I don't know what I'm talking about, but this just wasn't it for me. I'd rewatch the other three SpongeBob movies any day over this. This movie, I don't think it's something I'd watch again, but yeah, that's my review of Saving Bikini Bottom, my first rant in quite some time, so yeah, take care, everybody. Hopefully, whatever I review next, I'm a little more hopeful, and hopefully it's something that I enjoy more. So take care.